In this video, we're going to analyze the relationship between free energy changes and equilibrium. So the free energy change for a process that occurs under non-standard conditions can be expressed according to the following equation, where our delta G naught is our standard free energy change, R is the gas constant, T is our temperature in Kelvin, and Q, of course, is our reaction quotient. We also know that when a process, a chemical reaction or physical change is at equilibrium, our delta G value is equal to zero. Now, delta G is equal to zero, not delta G standard. So in this equation, if this, if this reaction is at equilibrium, then our delta G value, not delta G standard, but delta G is equal to zero. So we can express or rewrite the equation as you see here. Now we can rearrange it slightly where we solve for delta G standard. So let's solve for delta G standard and we get the following equation. Delta G standard is equal to negative RT natural log of Q. Now if a process is at equilibrium, then we also recall from our discussion of equilibrium that at equilibrium Q is equal to K. So we can just rewrite this equation substituting in K for Q. So now we've got an equation that relates the standard free energy change for a reaction, again a standard free energy change, to the equilibrium constant for that reaction. So if we know the equilibrium constant for a given reaction, we can use that to calculate the standard free energy change. Or vice versa, if we know the standard free energy change, we can calculate K. So let's rearrange this slightly. We have our equation. Let's div divide both sides by negative RT. If we divide both sides by negative RT, again here we're just solving for K, our negative RTs cancel, and our equation becomes a delta G standard is equal to negative RT is equal to the natural log of K. So we need to get rid of that natural log of K and isolate K. And to do that, we end up with K, our equilibrium constant, is equal to E raised to the negative delta G standard divided by RT. So here, if we are solving for delta G standard and we know K, we would use this equation. If we needed to get K, the equilibrium constant, we'd use the same equation, but we'd just rearrange it to solve for K, and our equation would look like this. Now remember, the relationship that we're discussing here between standard free energy and equilibrium constant is of course only true when our chemical reaction or physical change is at equilibrium. Let's take a look at a problem and see if we can solve this. Calculate Kp, so the equilibrium constant, at 25 degrees Celsius for the following reaction. Now I'll give you a hint, you may need to get some values from the appendix in your textbook. So pause the video and use your textbook and see if you can solve this equation. Calculate Kp. So here we're asked to solve for Kp, the equilibrium constant, so we know that this reaction must be at equilibrium. We can assume that. Now we're solving for K, so we need to rearrange our equation as we showed you previously, and this will allow us to solve for K. Now R is a constant. T, we just convert our temperature into Kelvin, so really we just need to solve for delta G standard. So to solve for delta G standard, we need to use our uh, free energies of formation method, and that's where your, the appendix in your textbook will come in. So here I've got a, a small table which has some values on it, and we want to solve for delta G standard for that reaction that we just showed you. So it's the delta G of formation of the products minus delta G for the reactants. So our equation expands out here. Here we have our products, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide minus the delta G formation for calcium carbonate. Now again, our balanced equation, we have one mole of each. We use our stoichiometric coefficients. 
So we plug in the values of our products, and you can see those here, and the value of our reactant, calcium carbonate, that's given here. Now again, the values that you get from the appendix in your textbook may be slightly different, but again, the overall method is the same. So let's plug in those methods here and solve for delta G standard. Again, here is the uh, free energy of formation for my products minus the free energy of formation for my reactant, calcium carbonate. And if I solve, I get a delta G standard for this reaction of positive 130.4 kilojoules. So now that's not our final answer. That answer goes here for delta G standard. And we plug in our R value and T. So I'm just going to solve for this right here first before I raise E to that power. So here I'm just solving uh, for delta, negative delta G divided by RT. <clears throat> so here's my delta G standard value divided by RT. And again, always please get in the habit of putting in your units. You see here that uh, R is in joules. My delta G uh, standard was in kilojoules. So I'm going to change my R to kilojoules, which I've done here. And now if I solve this, I get negative delta G standard divided by RT is equal to about negative 52.6. There's no units here. And now I just need to raise E to that power. Okay. So I've taken E to this power and I get a value for K, my equilibrium constant of 1.42 times 10 to the minus 23. So here we have a very small equilibrium constant, which tells us that for this reaction, we have a very little product relative to the concentration of reactant at equilibrium. So be sure that you can solve for delta G standard if you're given the equilibrium constant or vice versa. And be sure you understand where to use this equation and when to use it.